Well, we're beginning a new journey together, and this is exploring um, the gospel according to John, the uh, fourth book in the uh, numerical listing of the books of the New Testament. Uh, I've chosen uh, this journey because it, it puts a little bit different slant on the Christ event than what we've experienced with Paul in the last four or five months. Now, to begin with, we must recognize that the first three books in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, th those are known as the synoptic gospels, and that work, word synoptic simply means similar, because those three uh, had to do with the life and teachings of Jesus. A little bit different slant. Uh, Mark was just a story. Matthew was written to invite the Jewish community to be Christians. Luke was written to invite the Gentiles, the non-Jews, to be Christian. Um, but the gospel according to John is not a synoptic gospel. It is not similar to the synoptics. And it's different in several respects. So let's just briefly look at these. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, the fundamental claim of authorship is very clear as over against the synoptics. And that is that the material and the slant on the life of, of Jesus the Christ um, was from John the beloved disciple. Now, you might think, well, therefore John wrote it, but that is according to biblical scholarship and study, that is not the case. Um, because John, the beloved disciple, is referred to in, in the gospel in the third person. So therefore, the material obviously is from the witness of John, the beloved disciple, but developed in the school of thought in the community surrounding his legacy. Um, the final composition of John is probably around 90 AD following Paul's letters, following Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and here the Gospel of John was written in 90 AD, 20 years after the destruction of the temple of the Jewish community by the Roman government in 70 AD. Now, now you have a remnant of the Jewish community that is now known as the synagogue community, no longer having a temple. And therefore, you have the synagogue community and the Christian community had split. So the world that the Gospel of John was addressing was not both the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians, as was the case with Paul. Now, those communities that split, and you have a Gentile community that in John's world of 90 A.D., um, Therefore, what was the audience for the gospel according to John? Well, there was a Greek community that existed through this time in, in our history. And the Greek community was known as the uh, those who had an intellectual understanding of life. And therefore that Greek community had not had any um, account of the life of Jesus directed to them, and that was the Gospel of John's audience to convince the Hellenists, the Greek community, into the experience of the Christian movement centered on the Christ event. Now, now, finally, 
most biblical and linguistic scholars are convinced that the gospel according to John was a composite product developed over a period of time within a community founded by John the beloved disciple. But this community had moved to a mystical approach of understanding life. And therefore, the final edition of the Gospel according to John was the product of a mystic community, the product of a mystic author. Now, to define mysticism is foolish. So welcome, welcome to the attempt of a fool, Bruce Blake, to do so. A mystic or a community, or one person believes that through contemplation, one can be absorbed into the divine and believes in a spiritual apprehension of truth rather than an intellectual assent to the truth and human knowledge. You see, a mystic is absorbed into the mysteries of the divine that transcend human knowledge. So the gospel, according to John, was trying to convince the Hellenists that life is not just made up of the intellectual pursuits of humankind, but there's a spiritual dimension of life above and beyond the intellect. Now, intellectual inquiry was the Greek way, but the gospel, according to John, invites those who were in this Greek world to be absorbed into the spiritual, which is beyond human intellect. Uh, therefore, the uh, study of the gospel according to John uh, cannot be an intellectual uh, quest for the truth, but it's a spiritual experience of the truth. Um, let's put it this way, that <clears throat> instead of the Christ event being an event that can be described, for John, the Christ event is a mystery that can be experienced. Let me try that on again. In, instead of the Christ event being an event that can be described, it is a mystery that can be experienced. Um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, they, they dealt with what happened, when it happened, how it happened. They described an event. But the gospel, according to John, presents the Christ event as a mystery that can be experienced. So, welcome to the journey. Different than the study of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Different than the study of Paul, especially in the book of Romans. And because mysticism is about the mystery, the writing is often uh, poetic in nature. And we see this as we look at the gospel according to John uh, in the scripture in the first uh, 17 verses. It is a remarkable um, event uh, that is poetic in nature. <clears throat> I'm looking for John 1 and I'm going to find it in a minute because my paper clip came off. But let's, let's listen to some of these words in John 1 to 17. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And then later, in the true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. And then in verse 14, And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, full of grace, and truth, we have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. Now, now those words are familiar, but remember the value of mystery? Jesus' name was not mentioned in what I read to you. The reference was to the word that was from the beginning. The message, if you will, the word from God to the human community was from the beginning. And that which was from the beginning became flesh and dwelt among us. You see the understanding, the mystery there, and this mystery is what the gospel according to John invites you and me to experience. Now, in these first 17 verses, we discover four basic understandings of John. First of all, incarnation is the foundation of John's gospel. Now, incarnation simply means in, carnate, flesh. So the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us in the life of Jesus, never mentioned, but that's who John is talking about, uh, the incarnation, the inflationness of the word is the foundation of the gospel. Secondly, for John, Jesus gives us access to the nature and existence of of God. Now we've sung a song, a lot of us in our background, we would see Jesus. Now if John wrote the words to that song, it would be different. For John, it would be written, we would see God. Because Jesus gives us access to the nature and existence of the divine. Thirdly, for John, Jesus not only speaks God's words and does God's works, Jesus is God's word and Jesus is God working in the world. See the difference? Jesus is God's word. And he is God's word working in the world. So in Jesus, we see God. So the gospel story is more than the life and teachings of Jesus. 
the gospel story according to the gospel according to John is about the very character of God and how the divine is made known in Jesus. Okay, so in summary, as we begin, John's gospel is not about Jesus. It's about God. It's about how followers of Jesus are absorbed in the divine. For as the word became flesh in Jesus, the word becomes flesh in the followers of Jesus. Let me say that again. As the word became flesh incarnate in Jesus, the word becomes flesh in the lives of those who follow Jesus. The incarnation for the mystic, whose journey is being absorbed in the divine, was not a once and for all deal. You see, the incarnation for the gospel according to John is a once and forever deal. Forever in you and in me and all who have gone before and all those who will follow, those who are absorbed in the divine do not see God, but they are God working and living in the world. That's what the absorption into divine love is all about for the Gospel of John. Now I want to conclude this first session with a reference to the classical doctrine of atonement. Atonement is something that God in Christ has done for us in sacrificing his son, that we might be made right with God. But for John, I believe he would put it in a different way. Atonement is not something that God has done for us in Christ. Atonement would be broken out into three words. At one meant at one with. So instead of atonement, we're talking about at one meant. And that is the experience of being engulfed in the very nature of divine love and being at one with God. You see, there's a difference between Jesus dying for our sins, atonement, and Jesus inviting his followers to be engulfed by the divine at one with God. For John the mystic, being at one with God is the spiritual realm of human existence. It's a mystery beyond the intellect to be experienced, not an event that can just be described. Uh, that's a lot, but I think it's enough to begin with. And so this week, uh, I've been, got some things that you might want to think about and on Sunday we can discuss. First of all, what's your response to the understanding that incarnation was once and forever rather than once and for all? Secondly, have you experienced had experiences of encountering those who are absorbed by 
at one with divine love. And thirdly, how does this introduction to John's understanding of Jesus remember the words veiled in flesh the Godhead see hail the incarnate deity the very familiar words of a Christmas hymn how does this help or hinder your understanding of what it means to follow Jesus welcome to the journey of the gospel according to John thank you